Okay. Watermelons. So you have um, some things in your handout about watermelons. Um, and so you have this a uh, chart and and then a table. And it's basically the same information, just presented two different ways. That is yield data from all the watermelon trials that we did from 2016 to 2021. Um, and so not all the varieties were in the trials every year. Obviously that would have been completely overwhelming. In the table, it tells you how many trials uh, that particular variety was in. We, the maximum number of trials that something could have been in was six. So you can see that there are a couple of varieties that were in all of those trials. Um, the ones where the variety name is highlighted in green are the three varieties that are also in the trial this year. There are 10 varieties in the trial. Only three of them are repeats. So that means there's a lot of new material in the trial, which is good. Um, we get tired of looking at the same things all the time. And I will just point out that uh, on this chart, um, the, the dotted line is, now I can't remember because I made this a long time ago, <laughs> I think a 14 pound melon. Okay, so if it's above that line, then its average weight is higher than 14 pounds. And if it's below that line, then it's less than 14 pounds. And um, all these ones that are sort of up in this top corner where you might be interested in them because they have high yields, um, those are ones that all have like not striped rind patterns. So um, the production that we have in this area, people are looking for the striped rind pattern uh, when you're growing for a fresh cut market where the watermelons are going to be cut and sold like chopped up watermelon, uh, then they don't care what the outside of the watermelon looks like. But if you're selling to people who are looking for a striped watermelon, then you can't have a weird looking outside of your watermelon. And uh, so most of these ones that are in like this top group are not really appropriate for production in this area. Um, another of the top varieties is Crunchy Red, which is in the trial this year and that's it. It has, it's, uh, ripens late and it gives all indications of being ripe when it actually isn't. Um, so it can make lots of watermelons, but there are some pitfalls this is why we need new varieties. Um, and then this variety is Fascination. This is a variety that's uh, pretty widely grown in this area um, and has been fairly standard for a number of years. It is sort of high middle of the pack on uh, yield, tends to be a little on the small side. Uh, this one has a lot of white seeds in it. It can tend to make a bunch of black seeds that are not ideal, but halfway, halfway decent variety. Um, then as far as uh, what else is out here, let me get my cheat sheet. So those three varieties are, are, these two are experimental varieties from Seminus. This one is a variety called Jet Ski, which is being used, that's also from Seminus. It has gotten some traction as far as production in this area. Then this one and the two at the beginning of those row, that row, are um, three experimental varieties from Hazera, 
The internal quality on some of these looks pretty good, but um, the round shape is not ideal um, as far as what people are looking for. And then the last three varieties here are three varieties from H.M. Klaus. This is a brand new one called Eleanor, um, which has looked pretty nice in the trial and had good yields uh, in the early picking. So um, we, we've only done one picking so far, and so can't draw too many big conclusions from this year's trial, but I wanted you to have a chance to see them see some of the differences as far as um, melon shape and fine colors. Any questions about watermelons? Yes. Yes. There's all classes seedless, right? Yes. Okay. How many seeds do you normally find in one when you open it up? Well, it's somewhat uh, variety dependent. Is so, it just one for sure? so that's, uh, so when we are um, looking at varieties in the trial, we weigh each melon and then we sample five melons out of each plot. We cut them, measure the length from the stem end to the blossom end, and then the diameter because that gives us an indication of whether it's elongated or round, like this one's really round. Um, then we cut it into quarters and you count the number of black seeds that you can see on the faces that you have exposed. Um, and I cannot remember off the top of my head how many black seeds uh, qualifies mm -hmm. it as unmarketable, but there's a threshold. Um, and then we also me measure sugars and we measure rind thickness in the field. Those are all um, important quality related traits. Take photographs of all of them to try to give some indication of uh, flesh color because some of them are a lot deeper red than others. Deeper red is usually uh, preferred. Um, but there are a variety of differences in that tendency to make black seeds. Um, and some varieties have like just a larger seed size than others. Fascination has a very small, like the actual seeds of fascination are very small. Um, so it tends to make black seeds, but they're very small black seeds. So some people would say that they don't qualify as black seeds, but I think somebody might disagree with them if they bought one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and I don't know that anybody really knows sort of what causes seedless melons to make black seeds sometimes, but there is What can the market stand for is the size of the melon now? Years ago, everybody wanted 20, 25 pounds. Uh, again, yeah. nobody really wants those. Get rid of them. No. So, yeah. 15 to it, 15 now? More yeah. 14 to 15, yes. Okay. My gal likes me. <laughs> <laughs> All day long. Yep. Any other questions about watermelon? Questions. 